Hey guys, it's Mike and you're watching That's Cool Vintage Collectibles and today on the show I've pulled out my 20 most valuable records according to the median price on Discogs. I thought I'd show you what they were. Stay tuned. <laughs> So if you're watching this video, you've probably heard of Discogs, and if you're a record collector uh, especially, and Discogs is a uh, website where you can enter your records into a database and they track the sales and they give you the lowest, the medium, and the highest price that that record has sold within their own uh, selling platform. So there's some flaws there right off the bat that it doesn't include, say, eBay sales and things like that, or it doesn't include any private sales, you know, Facebook sales, things like that. Uh, but it gives you an idea, and more and more the industry is starting to use the Discogs price as the list price for a record, and it's getting to be kind of a one price system, which in my opinion has a lot of bad things that get attached with it and it takes a lot of the intelligence out of uh, being a record collector um, you don't always need to know uh, anything about a record when you can just look it up on your phone instantly and it takes some of the uh, I don't know the experience out and you, you, it levels the playing field quite a bit but it also means you're not going to find a score anymore at a flea market or a yard sale or things like that for the most part there's always exceptions but there's definitely going to be less of that out there once you get to a one price system like this and it doesn't account for uh, individual sort of areas and and oh, anyway I could go on for a long time but it's not ideal what I do like about Discogs is that it lists all the information about a record and the matrix numbers and it helps you identify what your record is and that's really to me the uh, the true importance of Discogs and what it's uh, really valuable for. But I've never really tracked the pricing of my records and I couldn't tell you what my top 20 records are until uh, you know I use this um, at least in, in Discogs uh, listings these are my top 20. So I thought it'd be kind of fun to go through and then every year evaluate and see if any have changed or what the market is on a particular album at that time. So today I'm going to give you my top 20. We're going to start at number 20 and work our way down to number one. And I'm going to show you what the, uh, the most expensive records are in my collection. Okay, so for the purpose of this exercise, I'm going to be using the Discogs medium pricing, and that will be the, um, the average price that this is sold for. So not the highest, not the lowest, but somewhere in the middle. And uh, the dollar value I will give you is in Canadian dollars. So also, um, you know, take that for what it is. So uh, this is number 20, and that is an original UK pressing on the Vertigo Swirl label of uh, Black Sabbath's Paranoid. And this record comes in at $147 Canadian. Um, and it is an original and um, 1970 pressing of Black Sabbath. Coming in at number 19 on my list at $147 as well is a 1972 copy of The Velvet Underground and Nico. And this one is not the original that has the banana that peels. This is a reissue. But these early reissues apparently are uh, worth some coin as well. So this is on the Verve uh, label. It's a blue label. And as an early 70s reissue of this. That's coming in at number 19. Number 18 on the list coming in at $158, and this one surprised me quite a bit. Uh, I had no idea this was worth um, this kind of money, but this is uh, Slash's uh, album, and uh, it was just called Slash, and there's a lot of special guests on this. Um, and helping the value increase beyond that is I actually had Slash sign this album. So this is a, a signed copy of Slash's solo album, but there's some great uh, guest appearance on here. And uh, it's a good record, so but I was surprised it was worth this kind of money. So there you go. That's from 2010, and uh, I was uh, pleasantly surprised to see that one worth that kind of uh, money. Number 17 on my list, coming in at $162, is the original Vertigo Black Sabbath Masters of Reality box set. And, of course, that's on the Vertigo Swirl label and includes the poster. Um, and is a pretty rare box set now to find these first pressings. So that is a UK first pressing of Master of Reality on Vertigo. That's coming in at number 17. Number 16 is a rare Canadian uh, release of Let It Be, and it came in this box set. And inside the box you have the record, uh, and then there's a tray that slides in and out. I can show you here. With... Um, 
a large booklet that came with it, and there is the booklet. Um, it's like a 75-page booklet or something. I forget how many, but um, it's a it's a big, thick book that came with it in this box set. And, of course, you get the, the record as well, which I keep separate from this. So that is uh, around $165 uh, in the median. Um, I've definitely seen it sell for more than that, and I've seen it sell for less than that. So I'm not sure what... Uh, I guess that is a pretty good average price. Um, but that is the uh, Rare Canadian Let It Be box set that was released very early and uh, a very limited number. Next up at number 15, we're staying with the Beatles, and this is an original 1966 UK revolver on Parlophone, uh, first pressing stereo. And uh, this is a great sounding record. It's, it's my favorite Beatle record too, so it's, it's nice to have an original UK pressing of that. But that one is coming in at number 15 at $165. Number 14 is Led Zeppelin 2, and this is the famous uh, Robert Ludwig Hot Mix, which is um, the uh, first pressing uh, U.S. copy that Robert Ludwig uh, did the mixing on. And when it was originally mixed down, it was very, very loud. And um, there were problems with cheaper record players uh, keeping the needle on the turntable because it was mixed so hot. So uh, there... Um, uh, they're out there. Uh, this one is in pretty good shape and it sounds amazing actually. And um, uh, they were pulled very quickly so they're kind of a rare pressing. And how you know if you have one is on the uh, matrix inside there will be right in there the uh, initials R and L. And that's how you know that you've got one. And um, they're quite a... Uh, a cool record to find and I'm sure for a long time they just floated around with nobody really knowing they were anything special but they are and uh, this one's coming in around hundred and sixty six dollars number 13 is uh, a funk album one of the most famous this is Funkadelic's Maggot Brain and this is hundred and sixty nine dollars so we're kind of creeping up finally into some more expensive stuff um, $169, and that's the median price on Discogs for this funky, funkadelic album. Number 12 is another Vertigo pressed album, and I really do like the Vertigo pressings. Uh, they're hard to find and they're expensive. This one's coming in at $177 at the median, and that is May Blitz, and you'll see it's the Vertigo Swirl label. This is from, I think, 1970. This one came out. They sound a lot like cream if you're into that kind of sound but it's really cool killer heavy guitar stuff um fantastic band it's a really hard album to find but if you can find it i really recommend this one great album number 11 is a rare pressing of a david bowie record the man who sold the world and this is the cartoon cover uh, this is coming in at $180. There's a little bit on the back of somebody's writing on this one, which may affect the value. But it's such a rare record um, that uh, I was happy to own it in basically any condition I could find it. So that is coming in at number 11 at $180. Okay, entering the top 10, we're going to go back with another Vertigo Swirl, and this is the first Black Sabbath record, UK original first pressing, and this is a record that uh, really helped to launch the genre of heavy metal, and it's a very important record. To have a nice first pressing is uh, great, I'm, I'm excited to have that, and that's coming in at $188. Number nine rolls in at $209, and this is Pink Floyd and um, A Saucer Full of Secrets, 1968. It's also in the original shrink wrap, and it is on the Tower label, U.S. first pressing in shrink. Pink Floyd, Saucer Full of Secrets, that's coming in at number nine. At number seven, uh, I have a very obscure Canadian garage rock band known as the Ugly Ducklings, and this is somewhere outside of first pressing, and it is valued at around $205, and that'll come in at number seven on my list, and a really exceptionally good garage rock album, but a hard one to find. You can find a reissue of it, uh, but to find the originals are pretty tough. So there you go. That's number seven. Number six, also coming in at $205, is a 
is this very early 1969 Led Zeppelin 1 pressing on the UK plum label. And um, this is an, an original 69 pressing. It's not the first pressing of this album, but it's an early enough one that it uh, warrants some value. And it's the one with the gray, gray strip along the bottom. So that is Led Zeppelin 1 1969 UK pressing and coming in around $205. Coming in at number five at $211, this is a 1978 Japanese pressing of Dark Side of the Moon, a Japanese import from EMI, and has all the uh, poster, uh, the insert cards, everything that came with it, the full complete OB strip. It's in immaculate condition, and it's a really good sounding pressing of Dark Side of the Moon. It's the best one I've ever heard, as a matter of fact. And some of these Japanese pressings are very, very good. So this is uh, one of my favorites in the collection and one that uh, I do listen to pretty frequently. Number four at $215 is another Vertigo record. This is Gentle Giant Octopus on that great Vertigo swirl. And you might notice I kind of collect these. And they're, they're expensive records. They're... Um, they're really uh, difficult to track down in the wild, but when you do find them, it's pretty rewarding. Um, and they have uh, just phenomenal bands. They, the material is always so different from whatever mainstream was at the time. They were really looking for bands that were a little bit on the outside. And the artwork on these is incredible, and they're always sort of these gatefold, um, fantastic pieces of art that were on these Vertigo uh, record. So pretty cool. And that is number four. At number three, a record that I'm not going to show you the cover of, but I will show you the inside. Uh, track Records, 1969, the famous Jimi Hendrix, Electric Ladyland on track. And uh, the album that was instantly banned in the UK. And this is the famous cover of that. And uh, a record that comes in at around $279 for number three in the collection. At number two, I'm going to have a bit of a uh, multi-album uh, run here from uh, a band that these records are certainly expensive. And this would be back to uh, the, the 1970s. These are Australian pressings from ACDC. Um, these first two come in around $330. We have Dirty Deeds, Done Dirt Cheap, and High Voltage. And these are the original Australian releases with the Australian covers. And at $450, Let There Be Rock would be the other one. So I'm going to call that just number two, but a few records there. And the number one record in my collection uh, coming in at over $500 uh, with the median is the Beatles butcher record yesterday and today and this is a third state peeled i've got this in a frame right now but this is a third state uh butcher record and the prices on these fluctuate i would actually hazard a guess mine is worth a little bit more than that because of the condition of the peel and of the record itself it's in pretty good shape and it's a really well peeled uh, butcher and sometimes you see them in, in just horrendous condition but this one's not bad it's got a little spot down here but overall, it's a pretty good peel, and uh, the record itself is pretty good. So um, I don't know what that'd be worth. I, I'm hazarding a guess uh, more than that. So uh, that is number one in my collection, and I kind of knew that. I think that one didn't surprise me. Some of the other ones on the list did. I was surprised to see how much some of the Vertigo Press stuff has gone up. And, um, you know, it's nice to see what uh, what that stuff is. And just remember, with, with anything on Discogs, it's... It's a guide. It's not what you're going to get. It's a, it's what anybody will pay you is what you're going to get. And so uh, don't get too hung up on it. But it's kind of fun. It's fun to see which ones are, you know, important and valuable in your collection. And uh, it's kind of exciting to, to go through that and discover, you know, which ones are going to be of value uh, moving forward. And, you know, uh, records are funny. They'll go up and down again, I'm sure. And, and I think they will get... Um, I, th I think all records will come down and continue to come down, um, but uh, as as people get older, uh, I don't know if younger people now are quite as interested in some of these older bands or would realize the collectible value of some of that. I'm not sure, but uh, you know, I'm happy to have them in my collection, and I hope you enjoyed that that brief look through my top 20 and uh, just to see what's in in 
what I'm listening to, what's in my collection. So there you go. That is the top 20 records in my collection here at That's Cool Vintage Collectibles. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week.